Hello everyone and welcome to this video in the technical writing for engineers series. Here we'll be talking about a guide to technical re report writing as written by the Institution of Engineering and Technology, that is the IET. It contains different laws that guide technical report writing and you don't want to miss the first and the tenth one because they are really important. So let's get right into it. So, and as an introduction, it was written by the Institution of Engineering and Technology, and this guide was originally written by Joan and Jennifer and revised for the IET by Alex. And it basically contains 10 laws that govern the production of a good report. Now, these laws are only suggestions, but you would see as we go through that number one and 10 are very important and they are the only rules that must not be broken. So let's get right into it. So first of all, we talk about the audience. And if you've been watching other videos in this series, you know that we've said that the reader is the most important person. Technical level and writing style will be determined by the audience. And when you have, sometimes you might have to cater to various readers, various levels of readers. And in that case, you can strategically use some sections of your report, such as appendices and summaries to solve that challenge. So this is something you should always have in mind. The next one is the length of the report. So you want to keep the report as short as possible. Now, again, this depends on the audience or the reason for the writing the report. Now, the sh but in general, the shorter and more straight to the point a report is, the more readable it is. So you want to, again, use sections of the report, such as your appendix to put in information that might be only applicable to a certain section of readers or a list of symbols in case you have people that are not familiar with the symbols and would need some definitions. Um, these can be put in separate sections of the report so that the main report is as straight to the point as possible. The next thing we'll talk about is report organization, and that is organizing for the convenience of the report user. So you want to include an, a table of contents that contains the relevant headings, such as your title page, executive summary, and introduction, the procedure or the literature that you reviewed, your findings and your conclusions, what you recommend, the references you used, and any appendices for any information that is not required um, for every reader. So make sure you use the sections and subsections in a form that is in logical and easy to use. But keep in mind that you don't have to write the report in a sequential manner, but having all these sections and relevant headings helps you in the course of developing your report. The next thing we'll talk about is detailed and accurate references, and all references should be correct in all details. So make sure you document your references, that is, any other information you make use of in the development of your report. Identify your referencing style that is most appropriate for your report and stick to it and make sure it's consistent across board. So that includes documenting the title of the, the reference you've used, the year in which it was used, the year in which it was produced, and the producers of that reference, basically. Those are just some of the information um, pieces of information you would need for your references. The next thing is the length and the, the accuracy, the length and the style of writing. So the writing should be accurate, concise and unob unobtrusive. When we speak about accuracy, we're talking about your spelling, the typing error, um, ensure you avoid typing errors, punctuation marks, using the right words, using a good style in terms of varying the length of your sentences. So you don't want to have only long sentences that are confusing or only short sentences that don't pass any information across. So you want to also make sure that you vary the length of the sentences to ensure that it gives a good flow of for the reader. In terms of your use of paragraphs, you want to make sure that each paragraph has a central theme that is being passed on passed across. Each consecutive paragraph is has a flow or has a connection that, you know, again, helps for a good flow of information um, that as it's presented. In terms of brevity, ensure you go straight to the point, avoid cliches, avoid jargon phrases, avoid sentences that don't pass on any new information. When we talk about unobtrusive writing, we're saying that even though it should be a formal report, it should be easy to read, don't make use of any grandiose or jargon phrases and 
ensure that there's a good flow in the way the information is presented. Next, we talk about your diagrams. And here we are saying that the right diagram with the right label should be in the right place for the reader. When we talk about diagrams, we're literally talking about any non-text infographic such as tables, graphs, charts, drawings, etc. So these are a concise way of presenting complex information. So definitely spend some time thinking of where they can be placed within the information flow in the document. Also be sure to re reference these diagrams within the text and think about how you place your labels on the diagrams. Make sure they are consistently used. The labels are consistently used as well. The presentation should be consistent and clear. So for example, do not use colors to represent different classes of information if this will be viewed in a black and white format. Next, we go to summaries. Summaries give the whole picture of the report in a short form. And this is especially useful for those who may not have the time or the interest to read the whole report. So for example, executives, um, busy executives or senior leaders or those that want to be reminded of the main points of the report. So the highlights of summaries should include a background of the topic, major findings and conclusions of the report. And if you need any more details on summaries, I've got a video on that. So I'm going to link in the description box as well. So definitely check that out as well. Next, we go on to the report checking process. So how do you check your report? To, for technical errors, for typing errors, and any inconsistencies. So generally, you want to have three types of checks. So check by the author themselves to ensure that, you know, you have done the best you can you can in, in producing that report. Whilst it may be tough, so you might have to do things like, you know, leave the report for a while and come back to it with some fresh eyes or make use of different techniques which we can cover in another video. So let me know if you want that in the comment section. You also want to have an independent check by a technical expert um, for to ensure that the technical do, um, information is presented accurately and correctly and for any grammatical and typing errors. The next is the appearance of the report. So the report should look good as it is. So this speaks to things like the layout of the page the margins, the font size, how you place your headings, how you make use of blank spaces, your paragraphs, your diagrams are placed as well. Even the title page is very important. Yes, people still judge books by its covers and that is no different for your report. And now to the final law, the reader is the most important person. So now I said to you that this is the, the, the law, according to the IET guide, this is the law that must not be broken. And I absolutely agree because if the report is error-free, easy to navigate, technically accurate, then you are appealing to your reader. That is why this rule must not be broken because ultimately you don't want to go through all the hard work of making sure that you do your analysis and you present it, but the reader is not, that message is not passed across. So make sure you definitely spend some time to go through the different laws that we've talked about to ensure that it appeals to your reader. So always have your reader in the center as the focus as you, as you write your report. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know which one of these laws or which one of these topics you want me to go into further details in um, for, and I would um, create a video for them as well. I'll create videos on those topics as well. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It really helps, you know, motivate me to, to continue producing these videos because I know that they are helpful to you. And any questions you have, don't hesitate to drop them in the comments below or send me an email. Um, and until I come your way in the next video, thank you for watching and take care.